Philip Brainerd was a chemistry professor and an inventor. To find out about his wacky inventions, you can read along with me. You'll know it's time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Ready? Let's meet Professor Brainerd. He has just joined Weibo, his personal computer, for breakfast. Morning, Weibo. Have you seen the paper this morning? It showed Sarah Jean Reynolds, Medfield College president, and rich man Chester Honaker. The headline read, The financier set to foreclose on Medfield College. Oh, yes, I did. You know, if I could solve this whole metastable compound business, I could save the college. Better hurry up. Loans due at the end of the school year. May I see my schedule, please? But the professor didn't see 6.30 p.m. marriage to Sarah Jean Reynolds. He was thinking of his invention. Sarah Jean Reynolds was modeling her wedding gown for her secretary, Martha. You don't think it's too much? No, it's elegant. And it's a wonderful idea to go with the big wedding this time. It does put the pressure on the professor to show up. If he forgets this time, that's it. Well, in his case, once is justifiable, and twice is understandable, <laughs> but three times. Wilson Croft, a teacher from the rival college of Rutland, dropped in on the professor. You don't seem too happy to see me, Phil. I'm not. Well, the years we've known each other, studying, working together. What happened between us, Phil? I just got tired of you stealing my ideas, Wilson. Why are you here? No, to be honest, I'm here this weekend to steal your fiancé and make her my wife. Well, I think you'll be sadly disappointed. I'll see you at the wedding, then. Chester Honaker was in his library when son Bennett and the two security guards, Wesson and Smith, burst in. I flunked chemistry. I'm on a academic probation. How did this happen? Smith spoke up. We talked to that uh, Brainerd guy, the chemistry professor. Now, either he did not understand us or he forgot. I have a science requirement, you morons! Honaker glared at his son. We'll have to get the F changed to an A. Won't work. This guy, he doesn't live in the real world. He has principles. Honaker gave Wesson and Smith their final orders. Get something on him that we can use to force him to change the kid's grade. That evening, Weibo was helping the professor get ready for the wedding. Suddenly, he threw off his tuxedo jacket and ran to the basement. But if you go from hot to cold very quickly, you get a conductive polymer, and you complete the metastable sphere. Inside a small tank, two fluids were mixing. Behold! There it is! Now it'll work. He called to Weibo. It's ready! The professor attached two wires to the terminals. Just a little electricity. Weibo, do you know what this is? It's Flubber! Sarah stood alone at the church altar, waiting for the professor. From the third pew, Wilson Croft looked on. Later, after everyone had given up and gone home, Wilson met Sarah on the church steps. I'm sorry, Sarah. Are you going to tell me I told you so? No, no. I'm going to give you a ride home. Across town, the professor was now working on fluid flubber. The green goo ricocheted around the basement, smashed through a window, bounced up and down the neighborhood, and sailed back through the window. The professor caught it in his catcher's mitt. <laughs> The professor looked at his watch. It's the wedding. Oh, I can't miss this one, Weibo. Weibo displayed the day and the time, Saturday, 6.30 a.m., on her screen. I'm aware of the time, thank you. But your days are wrong. I'm getting married Friday, 6.30 p.m. Uh, no, no, you're not. Uh, because you're not getting married, 
period. You missed it. It's 6.30 in the morning. The professor raced to Sarah's office. Can you please let me explain? There's nothing to explain. You weren't there. For the third time, you left me standing at the altar. He held up the flubber. This is the reason I didn't make it last night. You broke my heart. So that you could stay home and make some green goo. Sarah, it's much more than that. Flubber could save this college. Let me demonstrate. No, no, no. no. Just give me one minute, okay? The professor climbed out a window with the flubber in his pocket. But his pocket split and the flubber shot out. When the professor jumped, he hit the ground. Well, if you think that you are going to get my sympathy, you are wasting your time. We are finished! As the professor was testing the fluid flubber, Honecker's guards were spying on him through the basement window. He lathered a golf ball with the stuff and let it fly. It caught Smith in the head. Oh, the golf ball is really moving. How do you do that? Then Wesson got banged with a bowling ball. You've seen enough? Plenty. As the guards hurried away, the professor sprayed the driveway. It vaulted them into the sky, and they crashed down into a tree. Next, the professor put fluid flubber into his T-bird and flew to Sarah's. Wilson Croft was there. The professor landed his car on Sarah's roof and listen to them. It's such a pleasure to spend time with you without having Brainerd hovering above us. Listen, I'm, I'm driving up on Thursday to Rutland for the game. Or should I make dinner reservations? And since Rutland is going to lose, I'll pay. All right. If your team wins, you can buy me dinner. If your team loses, we go up to the mountains for the weekend. Meanwhile, Wesson and Smith were telling Chester Honecker about Brainerd. He took a golf ball, he rubbed this cream on it, and then the golf ball took off and <sighs> popped Smith in the head several times. I got hit with a bowling ball, repeatedly. It's the stuff he's got, sir, it's stuff. I don't know what it is, I don't know where it comes from, but... It will give you one heck of a headache. Back in his laboratory, the professor was spraying Flubber on a board of thumbtacks. Flubber is going to the basketball game. <laughs> We've got to win this game. I've got to do it to prove to Sarah that Flubber really works. I'm going to do it right under Wilson Croft's nose. It was the big day, the Medfield Squirrels versus the Rutland Rangers. In the locker room, Coach Willie was prepping the squirrels, while the professor, hiding behind the lockers, was inserting flubber-sprayed thumbtacks into the players' shoes. Okay, Rutland may have us in height and reach, weight and power, agility, speed and talent, they have the advantage on offense and defense. Sure, they're, they're better coached, better trained, and their will to win is unmatched in the conference. But that doesn't mean we can't whip these guys, right? By halftime, Medfield was getting smeared 54 to 3. Some of the fluid flubber had rubbed off the thumbtacks. As the squirrels filed off the court, Professor Brainerd gave them another dose hey, by applying it to his hand and high-fiving each there team member. Be a flying squirrel. When the squirrels came back, they blasted the ball around the court and jumped five feet in the air. Wesson and Smith, in their seats with Chester and Bennett Honecker, recognized the work of Brainerd. 
Finally, with only 14 seconds to play, the score was Rutland 66, Medfield 67. The professor whispered to Wilson. Looks like a lonely weekend in the mountains for you, Croft. Then, the squirrel center discovered the thumbtacks on the bottom of his shoe and removed them. The professor ran to courtside and swabbed the bottom of the center's shoe with fluid flubber. Finally, the squirrels won. But when the professor tried to tell Sarah about flubber, she was outraged. Are you trying to take credit for, 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 for Medfield beating Rutland? The professor was heartbroken. When he got home, he spoke to Weebo. Truth is, Weebo, I'm not absent-minded because I'm selfish, crazy, or, or inconsiderate. I'm absent-minded because I'm in love with Sarah. Without the professor knowing it, Weebo recorded his feelings and played the tape back for Sarah. It worked. To talk things out, they took a ride in the T-Bird. When they returned, Honecker, Wesson, and Smith were in the professor's garage. There's a lot of money in your discovery. Perhaps we could make a deal. Any discovery I make will belong to Medfield College. At the end of the term, there isn't going to be a Medfield College. I'll forget the debt right now. No, I'm not selling. The next day, the professor and Sarah demonstrated the flying car to Pacific Aerospace, and a deal was sealed. Meanwhile, Wesson and Smith had broken into the professor's house, destroyed Weebo, and stolen the flubber. Armed with a squirt gun of newly created fluid flubber and thumbtacks in their shoes, the professor and Sarah paid a visit to Chester Honecker and his partner, Wilson Croft. After tricking them into giving the flubber back, they took on Wesson, Smith, Bennett, Chester, and Wilson in one big fist fight. Look out! and escaped in the flying T-bird. After the battle, the professor and Sarah went home to Weebo. Can you fix her? I can make repairs, but I can never bring back the life while she had. What was that word she was displaying on her screen at the end? Again with us. The professor typed the word in and found the file. It was written to the professor. Hello, Philip. If you're watching this, I'm no longer here. I hope my demise didn't cause you any undue distress. A full and complete design of me is in this file. You didn't forget it. I never showed it to you. I've made a few changes. I've removed a few of my flaws and added a little of you. I hope that you can love my daughter as much as I loved you. So, Philip created Weebo's daughter, Weebet. Sarah and Weebet stood at the altar. On Weebet's screen, the professor was dressed in his tuxedo, hard at work on his next invention. After the ceremony, he did take a little break to go on a honeymoon with Sarah. And when they returned, they lived a quiet life. That is, until the professor's next invention. <laughs> <laughs>